In my last video, I talk about building a radio for my $1,000 CubeSat and how I really don't know much about the design space. And that's true. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to RF. But thanks to Lightning Helix 101 recommending this talk by Michael Osman about simple RF circuit design, I have enough confidence to give it a shot. So here are the basic parameters. I will be building a UHF radio that will operate in the 420 to 450 US amateur radio band for both uplink and downlink. And specifically, it'll be between the 435 and 437 megahertz band, which is for specifically for satellite communication. The radio will have about one watt of transmit power. I'm basing the radio for my $1,000 CubeSat on OpenLST, which is an open source hardware design that the company Planet released to the public a couple of years ago. This low speed transceiver design has been used by Planet on hundreds of its Dove satellites for command and control and basic telemetry. In addition to the hardware design, Planet released the software for this radio in a thorough customization guide. This guide is incredibly useful and it made the decision to use this hardware as a basis design really simple. You can find the links to this below. Here's the schematic for the open LST hardware. It's just a single page, so let's talk about it. This is the RF section, which I will just cover up for now to focus on the rest of it. At the center of this design is the CC1110. This is the actual radio transceiver that does all the heavy lifting. Otherwise, this schematic has some power supplies listed and it has some various headers. Um, it has a clock for the transceiver, um, some power regulators, but that's pretty much it. Um, and that's, that's essentially it for all the uh, non-RF stuff. So now let's look at the actual RF section. So we have essentially five components. Starting from the CC110, we have a pair of balanced differential signals, which goes into this first part, which is a ballon, converting the balanced signal into an unbalanced RF signal. We then have an RF switch, which switches between the transmit and the receive paths. These paths go into the RF front end here, which has a power amplifier for the output and a low noise amplifier for the input, along with this saw filter up here, which is part of the input uh, receiving path. This is clearly, clearly a solid RF design as it has many years of on-orbit success. So I'm going to copy it, but unfortunately I couldn't literally copy this RF design as the RF front end. This part has been discontinued. This saw filter can only be purchased through special order, and this RF switch is out of stock everywhere. So what I've done is come up with my own block diagram of essentially equivalent parts that I hope do pretty much the same thing. The only major difference that I have in my block diagram is that there are two RF switches, which I'll get to in a second. So let's talk about each of the parts. The RF front end, luckily there's just a newer one uh, in the same series that has literally the same inputs and outputs. It's just essentially a model year newer. RFF M6406 instead of the 403. So it's just a new part. The saw filter, this is just a digi-key um, component that has essentially equivalent properties to the special order saw filter um, that was on this design already. This RF switch, this is in the same family as the one that was already on the design. And the reason that I have two of these is because I want to have a test input and output that I can hook up to without having to go through the RF front end. And even though the RF front end has some pass through modes, it's on extreme back order. Even though it's being manufactured, as far as I can tell, uh, I might not be able to get it for a couple of months. So I want to have a way of actually testing the CC1110 without having to rely on having the RF front end here. So I have two switches, which allows me to have a test input and output. And then finally, I have a ballon here, which is a one chip part. Instead of having a whole bunch of capacitors and inductors to make this work, there is a single part that out there for a center frequency of 433 megahertz, which should work for what I'm trying to do. So shorter video today, I just wanted to get this design out there because essentially all I have to do is now just the hard work of 
putting this into the schematic and then actually laying it out such that it matches the shape of my existing CubeSat. And then I can put it all together and test it and see how it works. There is still a lot that I don't know about this radio. I'm kind of taking it on faith that I'll be able to figure out how exactly the software works for the uh, CC1110 uh, transceiver, but I think that'll be, a, that'll be fine, and it's a problem for future me to figure out. Once I have the hardware in hand, I think that won't be too much of an issue. I hope. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.